This is the Tom Thumb portable radio. It is vacuum tube. Here I've opened up the front of the radio and let's take a closer look at the top. That's where all the controls are. The very top knob is the tuning. Then below that to the left is the on off switch and in the center we've got the volume control and then on the right is the battery AC DC switch. It, this radio does run on both AC and DC. I've got it in the battery mode now. And then all the way to the right you can set it on charge to charge the B plus battery. Here's the back of the radio and notice how they stored the power cord. It wraps around neatly and fits inside the radio. Let's take a closer look at the top of this radio. That item that's all the way to the left at the top that is a selenium rectifier. Then we've got a vacuum tube and an IF can and another vacuum tube. In this particular model it's uh, quite a project to change out the tubes because you have to take the chassis out. But one thing about it they won't fall out. Okay here's the bottom where the batteries go and you can see that I plug together some 9 volt batteries for the B plus and that metal bar that's on the left hand side behind that is where the two D cell batteries are and they're in series and both sets of batteries you'll notice that I put into plastic bags that way if they leak they'll leak inside the plastic bag and here is the model number of this radio Tom Thumb. Here is a wiring diagram of a Tom Thumb. Now this isn't the exact wiring diagram of the model I have but it's very very close. What I did was I went to the same manufacturer with the same tube lineup and this circuit is almost identical. What the difference is is how they switch the battery the AC power and the charge. The rest of it is the same as my radio. All the way to the left is the antenna and its signal gets applied to the center grid of the 1R5. The local oscillator gets applied to three grids of the 1R5. Now all this gets mixed together and what comes out at the plate is a 455 kilohertz signal. Both these IF cans, there's two of them, are sharply tuned to 455 kilohertz. The output of the first IF can is applied to the control grid of the 1T4 and that's the tube that I have in my set. It amplifies the signal and sends it over to the second IF can and the secondary of that IF can is where we have the detector circuit and the detector circuit is the plate and filament of the 1S5 and what that does is it changes that 455 kilohertz information into audio and the audio goes over to the volume control and that signal goes up to the control grid of the 1S5. The 1S5 amplifies it, sends it over to the control grid of the 3S4. It amplifies it enough to drive the speaker. If you would like more detailed information about how the Super Heterodyne radio works, just go to my channel do a search channel, type in AM Enter, and you will find a number of videos that goes into much more detail of how a super heterodyne radio works. Now here's a demo on the operation of this radio. And the prices 
that they showed, which were very few, operation where you see a nurse practitioner and you'd have if you had a regular physician going to his or her office and that's not a fluke that's part of I think this radio sounds pretty good for a 1947 tube type portable radio they're also buying a huge number of dollar uh, patient referrals for checking someone into the hospital thanks for watching